Wilkowski broke out of prison half an hour ago. All motorists take warning. Pete Wilkowski drew a life sentence last year for the brutal slaying of a wealthy Southside widow. number on the shirt. It's Wilkowski. It isn't, Pete. It's just some poor guy who gave him a lift. With the good things that come to Chicago, we get some of the bad, too. Like Pete Wilkowski. A big city can't choose its people. My name's Frank Ballinger, Detective Lieutenant, M Squad, a special detail of the Chicago Police. I drew a part in the manhunt since every available police officer was used. We knew from finding the dead motorist's body that he had reached Chicago. We searched the familiar haunts of his. I tried the obvious first, his mother's place. Please excuse me, I, I was sleeping. I work all the night. I'm sorry, Mrs. Wolkowski. We're looking for Pete. Yes, I know. You're the police that put him in prison. And now you wake me up. What for? Well, Pete broke jail this morning. I don't know nothing. I don't care nothing. Do you uh, mind if I look around? Look, look. In there, I sleep. Nobody there. Out here, my Stefan has his bed. Well, where is Stefan now? Out. Maybe he goes to see a girl. Maybe to Stanis' lunchroom. He's a good boy. Is this a picture of him? Yes. Stefan. You can see he's a good boy. Never no trouble. He goes to school, works after. You see he's good. Yes. Has uh, Pete tried to contact you? Let me call you on the telephone. How can he? Peter, he's dead. Mrs. Wolkowski. He died the day he did the thing that put him in prison. I have no son, Peter. He never come to me again. You realize, of course, that if he does try to contact you, you'll have to notify the police. For me, he's dead. Thank you, Mrs. Wolkowski. Chicago is a great melting pot, the home of people from every land. Here they have a chance to live in freedom or to throw it away. Once I walked a beat in this part of town so I knew where I might find Stefan. Sergeant Miller had spotted the boy in a lunchroom and he was not alone. Shown. Steve, please be careful. Careful? He'll want you to help him. He's my brother. He's trouble, and he'll hurt you. That's why I risk coming down here. I owe so much to your mother. Don't worry about me, Mary. I'll be all right. I hope so. I've got to go now. Goodbye. Hi. Well, you're Steve Wilkowski, aren't you? And you're a cop. Yeah. Pretty nice. She's a girl I used to work with. You got any beef there? No. What do you hear from Pete? I hear he's doing all right. How about
about you? Don't get smart, kid. He killed a guard. Who was maybe trying to kill him, huh? He also killed a motorist just to get his clothes. I don't believe that. Pete's no killer. When they sent him up, he was framed. They all say that. It's true. You know, I don't think you want to be like your brother. Yeah? Maybe Pete's breakout will teach you a lesson. Show you what a cheap phony he really is. You shut up about my brother. Okay, have it your way. Then maybe a year, maybe two years from now, you'll be in a cell just like he was. Look, I'm putting you on notice. If you hear from Pete, I want to know about it. Fast. Hello. Pete loves Mary. the police had the phone bug from the cellar. When the sudden three-word call came in for Steve, our man immediately relayed it to Lieutenant Ruddy, who was in charge of the case. Pete loves Mary. Well, maybe it's an old Valentine we're looking for. Cut the jokes, Ballinger. It must mean something to the kid. And I'll get it out of brother Steve. Not in a million years. Bring him in. Ruddy, I know this kid. He's not going to talk. M Squad's not running this case. I didn't ask for you. I'm doing my best on orders from downtown. Bring the kid in. We're gonna need that kid to lead us to Pete. My angle's different, and you heard what I told you to do. <laughs> sure, but we'd probably do a lot better with Mary. Are you trying to give me a bad time? Mary Cavallo's a blank. We went over that an hour ago. She's married. Left Chicago. Yeah, but it's no crime to come back to Chicago. She was Pete's girl five years ago. Pete loves Mary. She could be one of a hundred women named Mary. Sure, probably of a hundred women he knew, but there's only one Mary. Look. I promise that they go through the file. Holding out on me. No, it's just that I know she's in town and I want to find her. Where? Look, she had parents, friends. She went to school two miles from here. People had to leave some trace. You'd like to make a monkey out of me, wouldn't you? No, I just have a hunch. She happened to be with Steve today. Okay. You try for her. Otherwise, you bring in that kid, brother. Okay. Yeah? Speaking. Of course he left after Steve's call. What? You lost him? Ballinger! You find him and bring him to me. Steve's phone didn't answer, so I had to look for Mary Cavallo without any help from him. Her friends said that she'd gone away. My luck was at rock bottom until I met one of her old school pals who kept track of old school pals. Mary was Mrs. J. Walter Kearney now, wife of a wealthy manufacturer, with an apartment on the Gold Coast, and that's about as far as you can get from where she used to live. Why do you do this to me? Oh, please go. I don't know anything about Pete. I haven't seen him in years. I know this is embarrassing, Mrs. Kearney, but we do need your cooperation. I know, but what can I tell you? What did you tell Steve Wolkowski today? When I read the papers, I told him to stay away from his brother, for his mother's sake. Then you haven't been in contact with Pete. Look, I'm married now. He doesn't know where I live, my new name. Neither does Steve. I'm trying to think back when you knew Pete. No, I won't be mixed up in this. My husband doesn't know anything. I'm not trying to embarrass you, Mrs. Kearney. I just want to find out a little information. He mustn't know I ever knew a man like Pete. Pete was in love with you, wasn't he? We were both in love. When I found out about him, I, I went away. Steve got a telephone message tonight. And it said, I quote, Pete loves Mary. What could that mean to him? Or to you? I don't know. Must mean something. Pete loves Mary? What is it, a secret signal, a meeting place, what? I have no idea. Look, I don't want to get involved in this. But it must mean something. I don't know. I think you do. What do you want me to do? Just because I can't remember something that happened a long time ago? A man I once knew? Please go, Lieutenant. Good night, Mrs. Kern. Thank you. Have an angle and then you have nothing.
Maybe Mary hadn't known the meaning of Pete loves Mary last night, but I had to give her the benefit of the doubt. Anyway, a break came in that morning. Sergeant Miller phoned in that Steve Wilkowski had been buying clothes in a street market. Hey, Buddy wants a piece of your hide for losing the kid last night. No, oh, he's just an M squad fan. No, I'm not kidding. He's really sore. Huh? Yeah. Where's the kid now? He's down here on the block. Then I'll tell you what. Why don't you kind of stay out of sight and I'll see what I can do with him. Right. charge of this case doesn't think the way I do. He's not going to be too easy on you. I ain't bent any laws. Okay, let's go. What happened? Wait till Ruddy hears about this. but I made it clean. circle the park and come back. Okay? A kid with mixed loyalties can make a lot of trouble, and Steve was doing just that. I was sure by now that he had the key to Pete Loves Mary and he knew where to find his brother. Well, Steve was missing, so I tried his mother again for news. He don't come home all night. I tell all the police. I tell them all day, something happens to Stefan. No telephone, no nothing from him. Mrs. Wolkowski, where would Steve go to meet Pete? Peter, he's dead. Oh, wasn't there some place in particular they used to play when they were younger? The streets? All the streets. Where else? Well, uh, what about the park, say, Jackson Park? Yes. Any particular place in that park? I don't know. I don't go out. I work. Mrs. Wolkowski, do the words, Pete loves Mary, mean anything to you? That's what the other police ask. I don't know from nothing. I'm trying to think. You remember Mary Cavello, don't you? 
Mary. Mary was good. When Peter was alive, they were friends. It was a long time ago. She go away. Thank you. Mary was nice to me. She made good wife to Peter. That's why Peter scratched her name on bench. There was a love. Stefan made jokes about the bench. Where is that bench? In Park. In Jackson Park? I don't know. Maybe. Is it close to here? Yes. All right, thank you. on the robbery report? Yeah, I concentrated on the park areas like you asked. Oh. A lot of activity up in Lincoln Park last night, stick-ups. Oh. Yeah, and some of the description could tie Wolkowski in, too. Well, no, Wolkowski needs money. Yeah, they're all just little jobs, you know, like anything from a cab driver to a drunk, 12 of them. But they all took place in a few blocks within Lincoln Park between 9 and 2 a.m. Yeah, he's on foot, he has to be. I know he's buried in that park someplace. Get me in, squad, please. You know, if we could find that bench. Yeah. Hello, Ballinger. Yeah, look, I got an angle up in Lincoln Park. Yeah, that's right. Cover all the exits, put some men along the North Shore Drive. Right. Okay. All right, let's go. Right on. Ballinger. Yeah. Yeah, all right, I'll do that. You go up to Jackson Park and relieve Martha. You forget, Ruddy, that M-Squad works with the precincts for place its own hunches. You're under my supervision on this case. Up to a point, but I've got a lead. And regulations say that I play it. See you later, Ruddy. Mrs. Kearney, you're gonna have to try to remember. The inscription, it wasn't cut on a rock or a stone, it was carved in a bench. Will this have to get in the paper? Look, we're wasting time. Do you want me to ask your husband what you should do? No, no, please. Then try to remember. It was Lincoln Park, wasn't it? Well, what part of Lincoln Park? I'm not sure. Down in a sort of glen. What part of the park? North, south, what? Well, when you're on the road, you can see the gun club in one direction and the diversity entrance in the other. You're positive? Yes. Thank you. Hey, Steve. All right, Steve, keep her stopped and no tricks. Just some old clothes back here. Big Brother must be late. We're waiting someplace else. Where? All right, take a description of the car and notify him on all exits from the park. Well, what about him? Well, Steve and I are going to take a little ride around the park. Big Brother wouldn't take a pot shot at me sitting next to you. But you know, he might at that. I move. You know, you got me all wrong. I didn't come down here to meet Pete. Oh, of course not. You're just driving around the park hoping to pick up some girl, huh? Yeah, that was just a... Oh, no, no, no. That's my story. You gotta make up your own. You see, we know about Pete Loves Mary being carved on that bench back there. You hold it. All right, let's get out. I wonder if 
they've heard anything from the north exits. Yeah, they would have crawled in. Hey, it looks like the car. Pull her right there! I got one of your pals here. Keep coming and you get it first. He's got Frank. You got no place to go, Wilkowski. Release Ballinger and throw out your gun. Open up the road and let me through. Anyone try and stop me, you get yourself a dead cop. Don't listen to him. He's going to kill me anyway. Let him pass. Radio the direction ahead. Calling all units. Calling on units. Heading for the north exit. Heading for the north exit. Okay, Steve. Step on it. Why'd you have to kill him? It was easy. Dragging him into the road was tough. Okay, kid. Pull into a side road and stop. Four. That's where our passenger gets off. I'm not leaving him around where he'll be found too quick. Come on, Rover boy, into the wood. Pete, Pete, you don't have to kill him. What for? Shut up and wait please here. Don't listen to me, please. I'll kill you. I mean it. Steve, give me your gun! No, Pete, no! Give me your gun! against Steve, that even if he had saved the life of an M-Squad man, he had acted in self-defense. The trouble with the Pete Wilkowskis of today is that they don't know the meaning of the word brother. They think the world is made up of people like themselves, or suckers, or policemen, and they hate, they want to destroy everybody, including themselves. They never learn.